Hi everyone, in this part I'll install a four-wheel drive on Tesla Cybertruck. In the last series I finished with the suspension and installed the pneumatic cylinders on it. Now Cybertruck stands on its wheels without any support. That means we need to make all these four wheels spin at the same time because this is not just an electric car replica, but also the utility vehicle. It'd be great to put an electric motor in each wheel. Well, at least a motor in each axle, but it'll cost some unreal sums, so I'll make everything easier and cheaper. Although I think I have a whole lifetime and will be able to get all these details, in the meantime, I'm going to install a cheaper, but also a very good four-wheel drive variant. Now I'll tell you what spare parts one used for this. Of course I took the gearbox with all-wheel drive at first. It has a drive for the front axle, and also an outlet for the gimbal on the rear axle, which is connected with the help of this rod. It is controlled by an air-powered cylinder which is still in a good condition, but I'll replace it with a servo motor so the whole thing could be controlled with a tablet. The speeds are switched laterally, they will help me in case the engine is weak and if not, will serve as a hill climbing gear. The next detail is a reduction gear which will be installed on the rear suspension, I got it with the drives. The reduction gear has a differential lockup and is also controlled by the air powered cylinder. There's going to be a pretty good set of all wheel drive with almost all blockings and hill climbing gears. It's good that the reduction gear came with the mounts cause it won't be so difficult to fix it on the rear subframe. I'll also need two drives that came up with the gearbox and also two missing drives for the swivel members. In order to connect the two axes we'll use a cardan shaft. Now we need to figure everything out by laying out all the stuff on the workshop floor. First of all I'll install the gearbox. The main thing is that the gearbox bell could fit into the subframe. I removed the bracket as it prevented the fitting. The gearbox was placed end to end. It's a bit of luck as I've welded the subframe without knowing the size of the future details. The only question that arises is whether the electric motor will get into that space. There are 45 centimeters from the bell till the frame according to measurements. If we're talking about the modern engines they will definitely fit in as they are very compact in size with a power of more than 100 kilowatts. It means an electric motor from the lift truckers won't be used in this project, maybe for the better. Before welding the drives between themselves I'll fix the gearbox in its place. I'll make some temporary mounts for now as there can appear some need to move the gearbox a little back. After that I'll connect the drives to each other. It'd be perfect if the drive rods could be inserted into one another, but not this time. There'll be a collaboration an internal drive shaft from Audi, and an external one from Chevrolet. We need to screw the drive shafts into their places and measure the rods, and only then weld them together. It's very important to adjust the length correctly otherwise the drive shaft can break. Either the gearbox or any of the bearings that are involved in the process of moment transfer to the wheel. I welded two details between each other on a special improvised stand. We need to try on everything again before testing. I will test the drives with an air suspension. First comes the lifting till the maximum position. The drive is pulled out, and there is a free motion at the maximum lifting point. While the lowering you can notice how inner drive shaft simply presses into the box and becomes clamped at the lower point without any motion at all. The rod length was chosen incorrectly and the inner drive shaft lacked the movement while the suspension lowering. I took it off and shortened by 5 mm. Now everything is fine and the drive shafts clearly work out the suspension movement. After the test they can be welded and a split bushing made of pipe can be installed. Such connection won't stand long time without it. The drive for the front axle is installed and we can move to the rear reduction gear. Before the installation the drive should be unscrewed. The moment I was ready to unscrew the drives and took a torque set, it happened. 
The Torx wrenches didn't fit the bolts. As it turned out in order to unscrew the drives you need screwdriver bits called splines. I had to buy a special kit. After the reduction gear is released it can be placed into the rear subframe. The subframe was wittingly made large so that it'd be possible to place the electric motor on request. Therefore there were no problems with the reduction gear placement. The rear support will be screwed to the angle. The front bracket will also be screwed to the angles welded to the subframe. The drives were welded together as on the front axle and installed in their place. I spent much time with their fitting, don't know why they didn't want to give out a full suspension movement. In the end I still managed to adjust them and they calmly passed the air suspension test. The details of the rear and front axles are installed so they can be connected with a cardan shaft. I screwed the cardan to the reduction gearbox as a fitting. It was obviously short and needed to be lengthened. Now I'll just calculate the optimal length without paying attention to the beat and curvature of the welded parts as this procedure will be made by the specialists who lengthen and balance the cardan shafts. I cut the short cardan pipe in two parts and screwed the hinge to the box. I measured the interior to find more or less suitable tube for insertion. I joined the parts between themselves and welded on a pair of points without paying attention to the coincidence of the details. I don't need it to check the installed nodes. I lifted the Cybertruck to check the installed details and let all four wheels hang. I installed an adapter bushing for the screwdriver on the gearbox shaft. This is the first electric motor that was installed on the Cybertruck so to say. I turned off all the blockings and started the screwdriver. As it was expected only one front wheel was able to spin as only the front axle was turned on. If you stop the wheel, another one starts to rotate. A differential gear without blockings will work although a differential gear with a blocking can be installed in this box. When the rod on the rear part of the gearbox is switched on, the cardan shaft began to twist, thus the rear axle will be turned on. There is also a differential gear in the rear reduction gearbox, and if you stop one will the other one will twist. But the rear differential gear has a blocking. If you pull the rod it will turn on, and then the two wheels will spin constantly forming the inseparable axis between them. It turns out that at the moment with all the blockings turned on the rotational moment is constantly transmitted from the engine to three wheels that is more than enough for an SUV. The Cybertruck gradually obtains more and more new spare parts, and who knows maybe in the next part it will acquire an electric motor, and it'll be possible to test the all-wheel drive in real conditions. In order not to miss this event subscribe to the channel, if you haven't signed yet. And that's all for today. If you like the video be sure to put your thumbs up and share with it on social networks. All this will help me to find a really decent electric motor for Tesla and maybe sponsors for this project. And by tradition see you in the next video.